start with uh, fast castle knights fast castle knights There you go. Scope. Taking Saracens because it's basically the same thing. So for the fast castle knight, we are gonna be using a really like old school style of play. You usually want to do it when you're in a pocket position, not in a flank position. You want to support your ally with a cavalry unit and like you want to go for a fast castle like you have a very safe map and you can basically fully wall yourself and attempt to go for cavalry units so the start is gonna look a little bit different we're gonna go up with did anyone think you were a dra Chinese player because of dragon now most people confused me with VV because he had a similar name as I did. That's like the only confusion I've had because people thought I was Vivi who, who is a Chinese player. But coming back to the topic at hand, which is about the fast castle. You have your six on cheap. Then you have your four on word. There's no gap. That's good. Since you have your four on word and you want the elephant or the boar, while you're doing that, start pushing deer at the same time as well. I'm gonna be pushing deer and I'm gonna be pushing all the deer so we are mostly looking to wall up and go to the castle edge instead of um, trying to help our ally on the flank with scouts we are going to be using knights instead to help him next few villages stay under the town center and between the berries. And once you have basically done with your hunt, you want to basically scout for the walls. How do you want to wall the map? In this one, I probably want to wall basically like this. Wall over here to that wood line and make sure my enemy can't get in the more important thing is like your enemy is gonna be scout rushing you 
so you want to be making sure that you are walled in time so that you don't take damage against the rushes that the opponents might do against you now once we are around 21 villages we're gonna be looking to start walling up as well it's not like a really good enough of a word line on this map but I'm gonna make it work still. I'm just gonna be using this as part of my wall. Even if like my walls are really big, I think it's still worth it to make sure that you don't die to any of the rushes. And I'm also just gonna be using like at least two or three villages to wall up so that we can be walled in the correct timing. This looks very excessive, but this is like how you should be planning up your walling and we're gonna go up a 28 population this is a very bad map for fc yeah it does but like i'm still showing how it's done even if like the map is not ideal if i can do it with a bad map you can do it with a good map once you're close to going up, start seeding farms. Once your sheep runs out, and now I'm all basically fully walled. Once you're up, and three villages to gold. And start saving up wood for do you have do you save wood for buildings uh you want to be most making sure that you will be able to click up so i'm gonna be making the five farms and now you save enough for a barracks we have 10 on wood once this villager completes walling and these three villages on straggler which will allow us to get enough for a barracks and now you go for stable and blacksmith to click up to the next stage next two villages you're gonna send to gold I'll be able to afford blacksmith in a sec. I'm gonna be using three villages. Since I was walling a lot, I did not have just enough word. I'm gonna be using the new villager to help with the continuing of the buildings and these will just go to I'm up I'm gonna be sending the new two villages to gold and we are up to the next stage with 29 villages and 30 population while you're going up you have the word upgrade the farm upgrade Six on berries, five on farms while going up to the feudal age. And once you reach feudal age, you make market blacksmith. And it should be fine. Once you have your upgrades, you make your farms. And once you have eight farms, you add a second stable whenever you have the word for it. One important thing to remember, you add the second stable for the excess production once you get up to the castle age. 
you're not going to be able to sustain the double uh, stable production for a very long time we're gonna be having like the these tables idle for like a few minutes so that we can set up our economy who is black serpent it's ai get upgrades based on what is happening in the game and we're gonna be adding four more farms which will give us a total of 12 farms and cheer up get the armor if you want the armor is probably the one you most of the time need before adding our pcs we're gonna go up to at least 14 farms and making sure that these 14 farms work so that we can bank up a little bit of excess food get the word upgrade and now once you get the word upgrade now we're gonna be starting to save enough for um our town center this is like the first time you're gonna be spending your word on adding town centers and setting up your economy and meanwhile like spend after six on gold you don't send more to gold you just leave the six on gold over there Once you have the 275 word, you make a town center, get housed, and you have like at least six nights. And I'm gonna be cutting production now. We're gonna be waiting for uh, our economy to kick in before we continue with the night production. Use the knights in combination with your ally trying to attack our opponent. And replace any farms that are going to run out right now. You don't want to uh, have these farms running out. After every excess, like uh, like any excess food that you have, you can start making knights with them. And again, just gonna be waiting for our um, wood to kick in. And I'm gonna be sending these villages out to make a town center on another wood line since this wood line is gonna be running out soon enough. For every gold that we get out of, out of these 6 villages on gold, we're gonna be spending it on making knights. And the important thing is to make sure your town centers are running at the same time. At all times, basically. Replace the farms and we want to get up to your basically 25 farms. So that we can sustain the double stable production and 3 TCs. I'm gonna be saving for wheelbarrow now. Floating a little bit of gold is always fine, especially if you're not spending it and making sure that your economy is gonna be fine. And not getting the second farm upgrade just yet. I'm just relying on the first farm upgrade. They're replacing this wood line though, lumber camp I mean. So that it's more efficient. Again, 25 farms before I start thinking about continuing my production or like getting most of my upgrades for my cavalry. The early nights with like the 7, 8, 10 knights, uh, use them as carefully as possible. Crusaders are attacking our trade You don't want to be wasting them, you don't want to be fighting a lot with them. You just use them to raid and support your ally. You don't want to be actively trying to fight your opponent's army with this army because right now you only use them as like a uh, support unit to be able to uh, protect your economy while you're booming and now since we have our farming economy set up you start sending more villages to gold and now we're gonna be starting to 
get the upgrades i'm gonna get bloodlines and then i'm gonna be getting the second armor and the attack upgrade while we are sustaining the villages out of all my town centers i'm gonna be setting up another farming area because i'm running out of spaces to farm Yeah, I'm getting close to 30-ish farms. I want to be getting up to like 40, 45 farms before I think about clicking up Imperial Age. I'm going to be adding Monastery so that you can heal your knights or pick up relics. And once you have those 25 farms, you basically have one TC just going constantly to gold. The rest can be on wood and uh, farms. And now I can send like a couple of villages to uh, stone. Basically around the time you're adding your monastery, getting your upgrade, you want to be sending a few villages to stone so that you can get a castle up. I'm gonna also like start sending this town center to another gold. Get the gold upgrade. I'm also continuing the two stable constant production now. And you can add more like we have an Indian specific camel second unit build order. Scouts into camels. The second unit. Ah, check out like my scouts build. Scouts into archers. You can play scouts into cross archers crossbow and then turn them into ca um, play camel crossbow. Let's continue making nights and town uh, villages from the town center at the same time. Good, bad, fugly. <laughs> Thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the channel. Now we're gonna be doing a university so that we can click up to the next stage. At this point of the game, like we are about like ready to click up to the imperial age, and. You can start adding more production to like go for more units or you can go about clicking up. I'm gonna be showing like the variation where we click up to the next stage instead of adding more production. For adding more production, I already made like a, a playlist with the like the scouts into night play, uh, playlist where you just like see what I do in that situation. Once we're up, I'm gonna be getting uh, the final economy upgrades. I need a little bit more word to get hand cart. Hand cart while going up. And get the farm upgrade so that you can, whenever these farms run out, you can replace them with uh, heavy plow farms. And now. And uh, now you just start making any units you're gonna be. Uh, your civilization is going to be specializing in. Huh, I'm like, I need one stone for a castle. So my civilization specifically is really good at going camels. 
I'm gonna be getting the camel upgrades, or the gold upgrade. Let's continue to make more farms. This basic fast castle allows you to be ahead in economy than your opponent by quite a bit. That's why you wanna do like a fast castle in a pocket position in a team game. The castle will protect your base plus will allow you to get like conscription and also if any unique uh, tech upgrades that your civilization might have for cavalry if they have any. Once you're up, get the upgrades. I'm gonna cancel a little bit of production, getting the armor and um, getting the armor and uh, heavy camel upgrade. Next up on the list is conscription, and after that, of course, if you have market, you can easily balance out your resources. But we're gonna be doing in the old fashioned way, just gonna be waiting for our resources to kick in. The knights at this point become useless since you can't upgrade them anymore. We're gonna be replacing most of our farms whenever we can. Get the attack upgrade. Most of the new villages can basically be going to whichever resource you need. This is versus AI? Yes, it is. And I'm gonna be start stopping basically at around 125 villages. Cut a little bit of production so that I can afford the zealotry upgrade. Zealotry actually used to be like, more expensive. In the recent patch, they've made it like 500 food. It used to be like 700 or 800 food for that upgrade. And now you just spam a lot of farms and continue. Continue making a lot of camels. Set up like castles all over the base, set up trade. At this time you should be sending villagers to set up trade in the corners of the map. And walling half the map with stone walls. Like if you are playing a team game, you want to secure trade. So I would recommend like just using the villages to stonewall half the map. I'm gonna be also simulating like setting up your trade lines and getting ready to like send your allies resources if they need any. Just wall half the map if you like are playing a team game. That's like what you are supposed to do, get like fortified walls and you should be set up for late game, make traps, make a lot of stables, get like more army out, set up trade so that you can trade across.